In my last video, I showed you the cleverness required to pull off the evaluation of the famous Gaussian integral. And it turns out the cleverness doesn't end there. You can use even more cleverness to extend that result to another difficult integral that shows up in physics, the quadratic Gaussian product integral. That's what I call it anyway. And it's the integral from negative infinity to positive infinity of x squared e to the negative x squared. So it's a different function and it's another one where you can't write out an easy antiderivative. And it turns out by knowing the result for the Gaussian integral, you can actually deduce this one in a really clever way. So I'm gonna show you how to do that in this video. Here follows the math. As I said in the intro, the quadratic Gaussian product integral is simply the integral from negative infinity to positive infinity of x squared e to the negative x squared. And the trick to doing this integral relies on a clever parameterization and the known result for the straight up Gaussian integral that I derived in my last video via another trick with coordinate transformations in that case. So if we take the Gaussian integral and we parameterize it with alpha, because we know the value of the straight up Gaussian integral, we can do a simple substitution to work out what the value of this alpha parameterized version is. Specifically, if we take y equal to root alpha times x, then we can rewrite this as e to the negative y squared dy, the integral over that from negative infinity to positive infinity, times this prefactor of 1 over root alpha coming from the integration measure. Now we see the straight up Gaussian integral right there, which we of course know is just equal to root pi, so inserting that tells us that this alpha parameterized version, which I I've denoted g of alpha is just equal to root pi over root alpha. So what we can do then is we can differentiate in two different ways and get an equality that will tell us the value of the integral we want. So we're evaluating this quantity. The first way to do it is to just differentiate the result of the integral, this value here with respect to alpha, which gives us this answer. And the other way to do it is to apply the derivative to the integral. And what we get is this here. So then we can set those two equal to each other and get rid of the minus sign because there's one on both sides. And we get this value for this alpha parameterized version of the quadratic Gaussian product integral. Then the value we actually were looking for originally, this famous integral here, is just the case for alpha equal to 1, which means we now know the result for this integral. It's just root pi over 2. You have now seen the cleverness required to extend the result of the Gaussian integral to another difficulty integral. The integral from negative infinity to positive infinity of x squared e to the negative x squared, what I've been calling the quadratic Gaussian product integral. The trick is to parameterize the exponent of the Gaussian integral and then take those derivatives in two different ways, which gives you a result actually more general than the one you're looking for and can be used to yield the direct one you're looking for by simply setting the parameter equal to one. So it's really epic. It's again the kind of cleverness that makes math so much fun. I hope you liked this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. D-trick out.